Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I had a story sent to me by a whole bunch of people, including Josh, uh, and the story unfolded. And the funny thing is that when the story first broke, I looked and said, that's an interesting story. And then it has a resolution with a happy ending, but it's something we can all learn from. And it involves Shark Tank star Barbara Corcoran, one of the sharks on the Shark Tank. The headline here from CNN says Shark Tank judge Barbara Corcoran, but that's kind of like American Idol. Um, she's not really a judge. She's a, a an investor on the show. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to explain it. <laughs> Shark Tank judge Barbara Corcoran gets her $400,000 back from scammers. Jordan Volinsky wrote the story for CNN Business. Josh sent me this version, but several people sent me versions of this with the ending that we have now and also previously when it first broke. But um, uh, Barbara Corcoran is thrilled about getting back her almost $400,000 that was stolen from her in an elaborate email scam. Elaborate email scam. And here's what happened. It's a phishing scam that swindled her out of $388,700. The scammer tricked her bookkeeper into wiring the money by using an email address that was similar to her assistant's requesting a payment for renovation. So what happened was, a scammer found out what the email address was of one of Barbara's assistants, made an email that looked like it, sent the email to the bookkeeper and said, would you please wire this money for one of my projects? And the bookkeeper glanced at the email, looked legit, and wired the money. The millionaire investor said Monday that she'd already written the money off because she thought it was gone. Okay, I mean, once she realized what had happened, she thought, oh, Money's gone, probably in China by now, which is actually where it was going. She says, quote, I really thought it was a goner, and she had moved on. Now, in a twist of good fate, uh, she said that the German-based bank that the bookkeeper used to wire the money froze the transfer before it was deposited into the scammer's bank account in China. So, (laughs) you'd think the bookkeeper would have said, hey, Barbara... Are we really wiring $388,000 to China right now for a project? But, you know, Corcoran said her bank asked the German bank to freeze the transaction so her team could prove that it was indeed a fraud. And it turns out that this type of fraud, okay, uh, victimized at least 114,000 people last year. That's how many people reported this. And, And this type of thing, I've heard it happening with business people, I've heard it happening with regular people. I've heard it happening with somebody who was closing on a house. Somebody was closing on a house, and and they found the house. The realtors have set everything up. They're going to do a closing. They're going to wire the money, and they get an email that looks legit, too legit, and they get the email, and it says, wire the money here. They wire the money, and then, of course, the realtor calls them up and says, hey, we need you to wire the money. <laughs> they say, we already did. No, you didn't. Yeah, we did. We wired it to this um, First National Bank of Nigeria. Isn't that where we're doing the closing? No? (laughs) And of course, at that point, the money's gone. So those 114,000 people last year reported $60 million in losses, according to the FBI's 2019 Internet Crime Report. Phishing attacks are common methods of stealing usernames, passwords, and money. Hackers pretend to be a trustworthy source to convince you to share personal data. To be safe, it's important to make sure the sender is authentic before clicking on any link. I've also heard people say that one thing you can do about this is uh, never wire something in response to an email. So if you're involved in a transaction involving real estate and you know the sound of your own realtor's voice, you call your realtor up and say, okay, where do I I wire the money to? And um, they might say, well, wire it over here give you the name of somebody to wire it to, call that person, speak to that person. And then if they give the information over the phone, it's a little more trustworthy. Um, I've had several people email me recently in response to some of, I've done several videos in this, where I get really, really bad phishing attempts sent to me, where people will send me an email and it'll say, um, this is Wells Fargo. Uh, There's been a problem with your account. Would you please log back in here and re-verify some information for us? And of course, flag number one is I don't have an account with Wells Fargo. So I know it's a phishing attempt. But the weird thing is that occasionally I get them 
mimicking banks I have accounts at. I've got bank accounts at one, two, three different banks. And so of all the banks in America, if I get hit with one of these things a week from a different bank, sooner or later I get the one that comes from my bank. And of course, I know that it's fake. Okay, I know it's fake. So I've never done that. But I can imagine somebody who's of a more trusting generation, perhaps not as internet savvy as they ought to be, and they get this email that says, just quickly re-verify some stuff. We've got problems with our computers. And they've heard that they've got these things on computers now, like the internet. And so they go in and they, and they, and they re-verify some information. And quite often, all they're doing is asking you for your password, your mother's maiden name, and some other important information so they can then use that to either hack into your real bank account or to hack into something else that they're trying to get at. So it's, it's a weird situation. But what I am very happy about here is that Barbara Corcoran is a very, very high-profile person being on TV. Shark Tank is a very highly rated show. I actually watch it. Um, uh, and, and, and it's, it's, it's partly fun to see the ideas that people have come up with, but it's also fun to see the idiotic ideas that don't get, <laughs> that don't get funded. And you're like, that's a stupid idea. And then of course, once in a while, what you think is a stupid idea, you know, they throw money at, but, um, Barbara Corcoran is a high profile person. She's been on the show for a very long time. I think she's one of the original sharks. And, um, as a high profile person on a television show that's you know prime time uh she could have kept this quiet but i think and the story got out before she got her money back meaning that she publicized it when it happened and said hey look i just got ripped off for three hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars, and i thought that you should you should know that so that perhaps other people can learn from this and and i have the utmost amount of respect for anybody who's willing to put it out there and say, hey, look, I got ripped off and, and, and there was a flaw in my organization. Some, somebody in my organization screwed up and it cost me dearly, but I'm still going to publicize it so that perhaps other people can learn from it. And we've seen other stories like that recently in the news and I really respect people who are willing to do that. So my hat's off to Barbara Corcoran uh, for publicizing this. But I also admire the fact that she doggedly chased her money back down, even though it was someplace in Germany headed to China. <laughs> she got it back. And, you know, it's, it's so amazing to me that we've gotten to this point now in our society. And don't get me wrong, I like the fact that I can make my car payment online. I can make my other payments online. I can shift money between accounts online. You know, I mean, I remember when you could go to an ATM. We used to call it the money wall. You go to the money wall, you stick in your card, and you get five bucks out. <laughs> no transaction fees. And I remember when that was a big deal. Like, hey, I can go get money out of the wall. But the idea now that we've gotten to this point where somebody can send you an email, and if you foolishly do what they ask you to do, a big chunk of your money will disappear from your bank account and go to some other continent where you can't get it back. That's the weird, sad part about all of this. But again, Shark Tank Judge Barbara Corcoran gets back her $400,000 from the scammers. Uh, but it should be a lesson to all of us. And unfortunately, it's not a lesson to the 114,000 people who had it happen to them last year who lost $60 million in total. And that's just the people who reported it. There are people out there who had it happen and said, money's gone. I'm not going to call the FBI. You know, so there you go. Everybody, thanks for sending me the story. Questions, comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Alcohol and calculus don't mix, never drink and derive.